Good morning, folks. Welcome back to the big board. We're looking at Compass Games Combat, uh, Volume 1, the second edition or the reprint, whatever you'd like to call it. Now that I have played a couple of turns, got some stuff going on, got some kills in, got some shots fired, I have a better grasp of uh, what's going on here. And I think uh, we've got a pretty interesting system here that uh, with, I, I have some concerns about it in terms of just like tactical stuff, but I, I'm no tactician, so probably should just shut my pie hole, but I thought I'd share that anyway. So this is by no means a review, of course. I'm literally two turns in to a seven turn scenario. We're going to keep playing, obviously, but and in fact, I'm uh, going to write this guy up and it'll be a nice little narrative story. And then I think immediately what I'm going to do from there is with volume two, there's a campaign, and I think I'm going to set up some characters and then just play uh, play a campaign out and see what happens. Uh, but let's talk about the game and the shooting and the bits that go boom and stuff like that and, and try and work out uh, from there. Now, I haven't thrown a grenade yet, but uh, I'm, I'm about to. Uh, so, although I do, I do want to capture this guy alive if I can because I believe he's a sergeant NCO type, uh, so we, we want to do that. So I may not throw the grenade. We, we may just do it anyway, just cause, and then we'll rewind it and then capture it. Uh, okay, so last time I, I spoke on this video, uh, part one, I, I discussed these, these orders and I'm not gonna go through each individual one and how they work and why they work the way they work, but there's some things of note that these are you know 90 second, up to 90 second turns. So very, very short periods of time and uh, literally, you know, man on man, firefight scale. So that's the first reset I think we need to do when we're playing this game. If you've been very familiar with uh, ASL or Lock and Load or any of the other, you know, Band of Brothers, Combat Commander, all that great stuff, right? OST, uh, all, all the high end, high quality, well known squad level games, this ain't it. Right, this is different. This is man on man, so it's more like patrol or sniper from SPI, uh, or even firepower. Although firepower is kind of more of a RPG style thing to me, really, than uh, a little bit overwrought. Uh, but uh, it's more like to me sniper, and sniper was one of my favorite games. But it was always very difficult to play as a uh, as a solo player. Number one, and then number two, it was also a challenge uh, with the maps and the artwork and stuff like that that, that really kind of took you out of the experience. But in this particular system, what's neat is with these orders, before we get into fire combat, so here's a run and gun, which you're going to use that a lot, and you're going to use the aimed fire a lot. So here's aim fire. You see those numbers across the bottom, zero, one, zero, one, and this is uh, four ones, right, but different colors. So the first... First one is black and means you can move. In fact, you have to move, right? You, because you're running and gunning. So you move one hex. So no movement points, just hexes. And then the next one is red. It means if you have a line of sight at a guy, you gotta shoot him, so you shoot. And then the next one is a move and the next one's a fire, so it's a run and gun. Now aimed fire means, you know, we're, we're, you know posting up, getting a good line of sight, taking our time. We're not doing anything in the first phase. The next phase, and if you recall, I've already talked about these impulses, they're not phases, they're impulses. So, uh, which is a nice word too, because it really gives you uh, a sense of uh, timing almost, right? Impulse, right? So uh, each impulse, uh, you, you will, first one, you're gonna do nothing, next one, you'll shoot, and then you'll do nothing again, because now you're, you're lining up another guy and you're, breathing out and squeezing on the trigger and boom you're you're taking that next shot so you can get that uh, that vibe going with the with the game there now there's other ways right there's other shots here there's a suppressive fire which is just yeah load them up right so you shoot every turn but you get a minus two to your effectiveness so your firepower on that one uh and in fact uh, I, I have probably played this wrong here because when I, I got so excited about actually hitting something that I pulled a wound card for, for suppressive fire. And I don't believe you do. I think you just roll 
for a morale check because you're you're not really capable of hurting anybody. Which um, I'm not sure I buy that, but there you go. Right, that's kind of what the rule says. Now the other interesting thing is that was with the rifle. Let's also see. So this uh, this bullpup gun here, the little with the seven on it, and see it's got the little machine gun there. If I go and look at that, I've got a rate of fire. The gre it's not a bullpup. I just call it a bullpup. It's a grease gun. So I've got the grease gun here. It's got a rate of fire of three. I've been rolling one time. I should have been rolling three times. So I'm a dork, making myself, uh, making myself, uh, my life harder for myself. And of course, then you've got belt, uh, belt fed guns that fire four times in a burst. You've also got uh, bar, this car 98, which is the basic German gun. It's a slow fire. So even though you could do run and gun, I believe you, uh, uh, or some other type of shooting rapid fire. If you tried to do rapid fire, there's an order here somewhere for rapid fire. It becomes an, a, a, an aimed fire because you're literally, uh, it's a bolt action weapon is what I am guessing. I've never actually really held one or seen one, so I don't know. So, okay, so kind of a long ramble there about just getting started talking about shooting. So as as we're playing, there's, uh, and, and units are moving, there are opportunities to spot. And so some of the nuance here that I, I'm not sure I'm doing correctly is the, you know, when do you actually roll to spot? Because you're rolling against, it's funny because you're, you're rolling against the target's morale, right? Right. And if it's got a high morale, it means it's easier for it to, for you to spot it. And for instance, if, uh, hang on one second. All right, I had to let a uh, cat in. Uh, and it's uh, 20 to 9 degrees outside, so he, he, he was pretty serious, or well, she was serious. All right, so this we're using this morale rate, and it's, a, it's adjusted for terrain and range, basically. And then so you know, we're looking to... I need to clarify exactly when we're allowed to spot, and that means we flip these guys and they become less day spotted, which is how we found the four dummies that were on the map. Uh as they were moving up and spotted them and cleared them off the map. And so there's that, right? So there's that thing. Once you've spotted something, you can only fire at it in your impulse, which makes sense. So with this guy, I had aim fire. And if it was the third impulse and I'd spotted some guys, so even though I'm not, I can't shoot, I can still spot, you know, they're calling out this stuff, right? Hey, you know, dude on the left, <laughs> whatever, right? Or dude in the hedge. And so uh, uh, he, he, he spotted a bunch of folk. He rolled for all these chaps. I realized that he could, he could try and spot them. Now, some are harder to find than others because they're in hedges and whatnot. But he, he, got, he got a bead on this dude here, put, uh, put some rounds into him, and that gave him a light wound in his second... Uh, second impulse third impulse he couldn't shoot at anybody else but he spotted a bunch of other folk so that was good so that, then when uh our our third impulse came up and these folks could either potentially fire so that we could do suppressive fire with this guy all right uh so uh private uh, crow here shot up the uh sergeant nco chap with the machine gun what is that gun anyway uh, it's an mg it looks like it's an mg 42 is what they're saying it is I'm just kind of, it's kind of weird that a, an NCO would have an, an, an MG42. I don't know. Maybe some of the, maybe that's, maybe that's right. I don't know. Anyway, so, uh, so then when you do get to shoot, it's a real simple exercise. All we're doing is we're taking this number, the seven. We're adjusting it for what type of water you have what type of terrain this guy's in and what his orders may be because, uh, you know, evading or whatever or sneaking will give them a benefit, particularly in certain types of terrain. And then you roll a die and you've got to roll under that number. So, the, you know, the old grease gun, uh, he can really load somebody up, uh, particularly because he gets three rolls, if you remember to do that, Kevin. And so that's pretty groovy. But then we got these M1 Garands with fours 
And my goodness, when you're running and gunning, that becomes a two. Now I only have three chances in 10 of, uh, of hitting anything, which is pretty low, right? 30%. And I mean, that may be fantastically historically accurate, right? I mean, I know that we, uh, is it Dupuy or Dupuy or whatever his name was that uh, said, you know, most of the guys just pointed their guns and closed their eyes and shot or, uh, or didn't shoot as the case may be. And lots of rounds expended and not a lot of uh, actual uh, uh, effective fire. Nevertheless, for gameplay excitement <laughs> and uh, engagement, you start rolling uh, dice and you roll you know, six or seven, five, six, seven, eight, nines in a row for all of your guys and nothing gets hit. It does get a little frustrating. So you gotta be patient because then, well then, you know, next, of course, the next, the next impulse when everybody could shoot, I roll three zeros in a row. So who's, who's gonna say, right? So it was almost like I had a vassal die roller in my hand. Uh, so anyway, the, uh, so there's that shooting thing. And then once you, sh once you fire at these guys and you get, uh, an effective hit, you, you give them, uh, a wound. Now you, the wound is determined by the card. Oh, cool. So this one's a, that's the next card. So that'll be fun to shoot somebody. Uh, KIA. All right. Notify next of kin. That's not very kind. Uh, then so we would flip, we would flip a card. That's the wound that goes on that particular chap. And then the, there are the consequences of that. So with this, we're losing one. If he has a command, you know, he can't be an officer because, or a leader because he doesn't have a, a black box. So he just must be a regular soldier. Uh, so impacts his command, impacts his, uh, True quality, I call it morale, but true quality and it Im impacts his fire. So now he would go down from a five to a four on his fire and from a five to a four on his uh, true quality, right? So he's got two of those now. Once we get to the point where he, and he loses his orders and he goes into duck back, uh, which basically means hit the dirt, right? This guy now will die once you know, if he gets a KIA or a heavy wound or something else or head, you know, headshots will kill as well. Uh, we will then accumulate these malices, these minus ones or twos until we get to zero on this. And then he's, he's incapacitated. So that's the other way we can uh, capture guys is if they're incapacitated, they're going to start trying to crawl or whatever, but it's also going to, he also has got to keep track when you get shot. It's going to affect your troop quality, your morale, your mood, your, uh, what's the term they use in here for the, in the game? He said, frantically trying to look it up. Can you find it? Don't think you can. Modified weapons fire. I don't think I have it. It's in the, this is one of the, you know, this is now I said this yesterday. I really wish they had the certain shots in the, uh, on a chart. Here's some tables. I would like to see some tables on a chart. So the morale checks, true quality checks, and wound morale check, which is what this is. So when I fail, when I roll my morale check for being shot, which is one of the things I would do after I drew the card, I was gonna to get to that. I would then go, oh, I moved from normal. So where's the list of things? I move from normal to cautious because it goes down one because I failed my morale check, but or I, I actually, I actually uh, was equal to or less than. But then if it's greater than, uh, it would reduce my morale by two levels. And if I roll a natural nine, it reduces the morale by three. And morale goes all the way from berserker, crazy, aggressive, bold, normal, which is where everybody starts out at typically. Then this guy dropped down to cautious and he passed his morale check last time for the second one. So, uh, so he actually should have, he should be shaken now is what he should be. Uh, it should be like that. So now he's got f minus four. He is down to a one on his, he's got five here, right? And he's got one, two shaken is four, three, four. Uh, so he's now down to that. So it's an interesting little mechanic here to sort of gradually remove the enemy from the battlefield. You've got to hit him. Then you've got to get flip a card to actually see what sort of damage you do. 
and then they're taking a morale check to see uh, what the compound effect of the wound being shot at, <laughs> uh, your orders, your ducking, and then you're covering up. You might be, you might go cautious. You might shake. You might route, which means you're going to next activation. You're going to take off and start moving uh, back towards t people from your team that are in cover. So there's a lot going on there. Now let, let me just real quickly just talk about tactics. And this is where, you know, with AI, uh, and even with uh, AI, uh, just the, the setup, I've got, you know, blue team kind of spread around and I had red teams kind of, kind of spread around. You know, I've got a red team guy all the way over here, right on the very edge of the map. Next turn, he's, he's gonna come off the map in this particular scenario where it allows that to happen. We didn't click this guy. Uh, so tactics. We, you know, there's there's no Overwatch fire or covering fire. It 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 happens kind of by accident. Uh, there was something over here where I had one dude with aimed fire and one dude with uh, suppressive fire. Ideally, I would have had one or two or three other chaps trying to move forward to go do whatever they're doing and. In this particular scenario, given that it's a it's an American patrol looking for the defensive positions or the locations of the enemy, you, we could assume that these guys were also out doing a patrol, trying to do counter counter intel patrolling, or something along those uh, lines, interdicting whatever it was that the Americans are trying to do. So I get it; that's cool. But now I've just I've got guys moving. Here they're moving in somewhat random fashion. Uh, this guy's kind of just taken off in this direction, going that way. Uh, and these, this dude moved into the field by himself. Now, fortunately, he had two other folk here. One ended up being a dummy, but now he's got some aimed fire covering his approach. <clears throat> but he's missed everybody he shot at. So, because they have a very, they have a terrible. Uh, shooting accuracy or effectiveness with that rifle. Uh, great range, but terrible accuracy. Uh, so I'm, I'm st the only thing that I think I would, would have liked to have seen here is some sort of allowance or assessment of sort of cohesiveness of movement and coordination by a leader uh, type to drive the enemies actions a little more in a little with a little more structure or, or have it look, be a little bit more cohesive it's the only thing that i in first play right first couple of turns i'm kind of like okay what are you doing and why are you going this way give me a, some narrative reason for that not finding it uh, but the rest of it all kind of makes sense i could see how you know one little uber dude would sort of go for the run but then again i wouldn't do that with an MG42, I would have this guy placed up here, shooting and giving uh, giving covering fire for these soldiers to get in close, so that they have a better shot with their gun, because this guy can shoot effectively at range and in volume, and do some real damage to to these guys. So this this just felt uh, awkward tactically for me when I was playing. All right, so anyway. That's kind of it for the moment. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna wrap up the uh, long-winded chat about gunfire. We will do some grenades and other stuff later. There's tanks in this as well. There's vehicles in this as well. We'll we'll look at some of that once we get into the campaign. And uh, I'm I'm excited about. I want to keep going with this to see if overall, once you play enough, that some of the tactical things that the Germans do, the enemies do, start to make more sense. Uh, and I'd also would see, also be interesting to see that once we brought in other modules, if they ever did the British or the Italians or an African front or a more mountainous terrain or whatever the case may be, uh, Russians on the Eastern front, stuff like that, if there were, if there are different, uh, sort of uh, tactical doctrines that could be applied to the scenarios and to the enemy factions, right? So that to me would be pretty fascinating to, to play. Like it might be interesting to swap sides here and have the Germans be the uh, friendly and have them fighting the Russians. 
you know, the Russians with their wave attacks and all the sort of stuff that would make great sense for a uh, solo adventure versus sort of, I, I kind of look at the Germans being a little bit more nuanced with their and experienced with their combat, particularly, you know, 41, 42 on the Eastern Front. Uh, so maybe may, things like that uh, really pique my interest. I'd be curious to see what the intentions are for the combat modules from Compass Games and see where where this system's going to go, where the fronts will be next, what force mixes they'll have, and if any doctrine will be layered in over the top of that, because that'd be the next thing I'd like to see here, uh, just based on very limited play, right? But anyway, all right, that's enough. I'll talk to you soon. All the best. Go uh, roll some dice. It's cold here, wet, miserable. Go have some fun. That's what I'm doing today. I've got one, one conference call and the rest is uh, me playing this game. Ciao.